Alright, I'm going to try to keep it down because people are underneath me going to sleep. So, hello everyone, my name is Elliot, and welcome to Elliot and Sonic's Hush Hush Adventures, The Conclusion. As of for this first session, this will be... We will be heading to Neo's house as we start off the final couple of days of this, of this, finally. After two whole years, <laughs> it's finally ending. So, without fur any more further interruptions, let's get into it. Getting to Mia's apartment takes much longer than usual. The weather frequently surges into a full-blown tropical storm and dies back down to just torrential rain. As a result of many of the roads suddenly become impassable, where runoff drains can't keep up. By the time you get to a building, the rain has finally let up somewhat. You close your umbrella and make it to the building, awning to the building awning without getting soaked. The storm promises you it hasn't gone far. When you ring Mia's apartment, her voice sounds bright and shiny amongst the gloom of the rain. Hey, you made it! Thank you for visiting me! Come on up! I've got emergency rations and video games. This is the place to hunker down. Alright. When you reach Mia's apartment, the door is open and she greets you with a hug. Hey babe! I'm so happy to see you! The lights keep doing this flickering thing, by the way. I think the power is mulling over whether it should go out. So prepare yourself mentally in case that happens. It's hard to play video games without power, but I have several portable options, freshly charged, lots of candles, and snacks that do not require heat or refrigeration. And, I mean, if the power goes out, there's probably other stuff we could get up to. I can think of at least one activity we could do in the dark. Like... Sleeping! <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? I mean, we can do both at the same time. I seem to recall... At least one of us being into that. Ah! <laughs> yep, there it is. <laughs> you! Okay, look. If you're going to bring up the past, I would like to gently remind you that there was drinking involved in that offer. But, I mean, I've got four or five bottles of cheap wine here. We can boot up party mode anytime. So, I've been doing a lot of thinking this past week. Well, ever since our talk in the rain, to be more precise. And can I just say off the bat that as cliche as a heart to heart in the rain sounds, it was basically everything I ever hoped for. I don't care if you think I'm a drama llama. I get hung up on moments and symbols and stuff, deal with it. Anyway, I got distracted. I'll get to the point. I'd like to talk about the drama for a moment. Is that cool? I literally love every word you speak. <laughs> you lame <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking about. You've gone mad with simp energy. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, my meaningful heart to heart. I want to show you... Well, everything. Come with me. Okay. What is that? Inside her bedroom as you enter, the pleasant smell of flowers and candy fill your senses. The room is mostly lit by the glow and the by the glow of a six screen computers. Oh my god. Oh, look at the stairs. <laughs> That's cool. Oh my god. Oh 
Ja. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my god. The walls are full of adorable posters and there are stuffies and toys tucked, up, tucked here and there. There's literally a bunk bed. It's actually more adorable than you expected. This is it. The gamer girl room. Normally I might make the excuse that I keep all this stuff for the character I play. But truthfully, I just like this stuff. What do you think? Nerd, is that a titani Titanus GeForce A6 TXN I crew? What? <laughs> you can tell that by the screensaver rendering? Holy crap! Yes it is! It's actually two of them in series Crossfire. It heats my home. Jeez! You kinda just blew my mind a little there. Could you really tell that by just looking at the screen? Are you a paid actor or something? Maybe. Also, look to the... I'm gonna zoom in on this. Look to the right. Or left, actually. A little bit of self-branding in the game. I always like that. I take it you like the setup, then. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to admit that cold reading my setup gave me a bit of a lady boner, but I'll insinuate it. <laughs> so, did you happen to watch the live stream? The one I sent you? You know, the live stream? Sorry, I'm getting super awkward about it. I should just say it. Yeah, I won the auction. What? That was, that was you? I mean, the private auction afterwards. I was so surprised and confused when the winner, uh, when you <laughs> didn't have me do anything. I even thought for a moment that it could have been you. I'm, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. Are you disappointed in me? Are you angry? No, of course not. I don't want to tell you how to live your life. It, I just felt it was the right thing to do. Wow. This was so kind and strange and impossible and wonderful and weird. <laughs> I really haven't made it easy on you, have I? No. The truth is, I want to change. I want things to be different. And it's all because of you. And you've given me the chance and the reason to do it. So, thank you. I've decided that that last live stream will be my last ever. A long time ago, I made a decision that I was going to do them just because I thought they would be fun. There's all this hate and weirdness online with ladies showing their boobs. And I just kind of wanted to sidestep it and do what I wanted. But now, I know that those feelings have run their course. I still think being naked and doing your own thing is great. But now, the whole thing is starting to wear on me. At some point, it was no longer fun or empowering. And I didn't stop it then. But I'm stopping it now. So, are we cool? Can we maybe have a slightly fresh start? This time with a side dish of more honesty and less touching myself for strangers? <laughs> Very cool. New start. Want to make out in the arcade? <laughs> you really are a smooth criminal, you know that? <laughs> so, I have just one more thing to do before I put everything behind me. And before I tell you, I already know what you're going to say. But I need to stress that I've already made up my mind. That one super fan that I've had for almost two years? I want to meet them face to face and tell them the streams are over. They've invested so much money over the years. And I told them I would meet them once in public to thank them. I owe them a lot. So, I want to do this right, and offer to give them back their money. Last week, they emailed me to let me know they'd be in town. I'm planning to see them later tonight. Then I can be done with everything, and put it behind me.
You shouldn't do this. Let me go talk to them. No, I can't. Please understand. I started this whole mess. I need to finish it myself. Otherwise, I just won't have the closure I need. Besides, I'll make sure they don't do anything bad. I've already arranged to meet them at the arcade. Janitors will be there, and the place is covered in cameras. I'll be safe, I promise. Anyway, thanks again for being here for me. One way or another, things will be different. Tomorrow is a new day. Would you excuse me for a moment? I'll be RB. Feel free to snoop in my underwear drawer, or better yet, my sexy cosplay drawer. Might give you some ideas. <laughs> No. <laughs> Mia leaves the room. And you hear him hear her make her way to the washroom. Looking around the room, you suddenly notice a notification pop up on her screen says it says Superfan 100 Arcade 9 PM <laughs> We're looking at a computer screen, Mom I'm looking at a computer screen. You notice right away that the long end screen is custom code. Something called Ruri Wall EXE. It looks sophisticated. You can tell that any attempt to enter an incorrect password will log the attempt. Take your picture and send an alert to whomever designed the code. We already know who by the name Ruri Wall EXE. This is next level stuff, way beyond what you can do with standard tools. Your options are to put your options are to put on your black hat or yes. What do you do? Guess the password. Throwing everything to chance, you close your eyes, imagine Mio as clearly in your mind as you can and look for the best word to enter. <laughs> crash crash 60 time one one no, one three three seven a moment later you're logged in the screen says welcome Mio what do you want to do okay tell super fan what are you want to meet now send a message to to super fan 100 telling them you want to meet right away they start writing their reply almost immediately you wait Say yes, let's meet now. Arcade in 20 minutes. Come alone. You accept, then delete the messages to destroy the evidence. Anything else? You check your horoscope. Answering some weird inner calling you can't quite explain. It says accept a friend's help or get ready to get your hands dirty. Your lucky number is 69. Nice. Anything else? You open Mia's picture folder and find dozens of pictures in her sexy cosplay. A friend's- oh. Don't show them, don't show them, don't show them, don't show them. You quickly copy- <laughs> Bruh. Done? A little message pops up and says, bye! And the screen goes blank. When Mia returns, her computer screen has already gone back to low power mode. So she doesn't realize <laughs> you are fiddling with it. Did a little bit of tampering. <laughs> Alright, I think it's time to get this party started. I'm all dolled up and ready to kick some butt. Wanna play some board games and drink wine? Or should I beat your butt at one of my video games while we drink wine? Oh, hold on. <clears throat> Listen, I can't explain, but I need to go. It's super important. But I'll be back very soon. I, uh... I want to ask you so badly where you're going. What's going on? If it's... someone else? But I hid so much from you. It wouldn't be right to suddenly be that girl. But please, 
come back soon? Or let me know if you're not. Just so I know you're safe. Please? Careful. Where's the fun in that? Ah, <laughs> uh, cool. You get into your car and begin to drive toward the arcade. When you're only a few blocks away, you pull over suddenly. Your mind is racing. You agonize over what to, what to do. is waiting for me at the arcade. I have credible evidence he was planning to hurt someone. Yes! Good work. I'll be there immediately. Do not confront him. If he tries to leave, only prevent his escape if you can do so safely. Let's get this bastard. <laughs> You're right at the arcade. Parking in the lot next to the mini golf course. You step out of your car, making your way over to the building. As the rain begins to pick up again, the thunder has started to roll again in the distance, and a flash of lightning overhead lights up the sky and lights up the sky like daylight for a split second. When you reach the employee, employee entrance, you find it locked. You shake the handle several times, but it doesn't budge. You start to look around for another entry. When the door suddenly makes a loud clang and lurches, lurches forward, you quickly run behind the dumpster. A moment later, a janitor emerges with a large trash bin. He steps away from the entrance to stand beneath an awning and then light up a cigarette. Seeing an opportunity, you sneak, sneak around him and enter the building. Searching the building. At first, you don't see or hear anyone else apart from another chainly chainer cleaning the bar area. But suddenly, you hear someone barking and curse. Fucking hell! You search for the source of the voice and see Harris pacing in one of the, in one of the back rooms. Where the fuck is she? Is she with someone else? Why is she late? She can't be late! He pulls out a cheap looking flip phone and obvious burner and checks the time. Fuck it! She's on Park West. Enough of this. Now's my chin. He begins to put his phone right fucking out in the background, making his way toward and approaches the exit. <coughs> Shoot up, but his right arm behind the drops, smiling towards us. He tries to see you. The hell is this? You some kind of freak or son of a bitch? Look what we have here. How is this your doing, you little? F Did you send the message to meet early? You're fucking dead. He reaches into his shack and you know it's only with all certainty. He's reaching for a gun! Suddenly another voice yells from behind Harris. Freeze! SPD! Put it down! Put the gun down, dirtbag! Bada boo! Harris whips around in confusion, seeing Fumi pointing her gun at him before looking back at you. You set me up? You fucking piece of shit, I'll kill! Harris pulls his gun. You drop to the floor. 
three shots. All three shot hits Cinem has in here is false. This is 042. I've got a 1071. I need medical at the rated A arcade. Over. Copy that. While Fumi is calling in the shooting, his hair is breathing urgent shell gaps. Interrupted for a moment with a pitiful whine. You catch sight of his burner phone next to him. You, quick, you quickly grab and pocket it. Fumi rushes over to grab Harris, Harris gun. Are you hit? Are you hurt? No, I'm not. No? Good. Now I can beat your idiot head in. What the hell were you doing? I told you not to confront the perp. I knew you were right behind me. Don't get all flirty with me, you reckless idiot. You could have been killed. Or worse. Damn it. Justice gets me hot. I have to stabilize the perp. I'll touch base with you once the paperwork is done. I don't want Brass knowing I put a civilian in danger to close this case. So hit the road. Not leaving you. That's a real crime. <laughs> <sighs> Stop trying to get in my panties. Again. Okay, move. I won't tell you again. You're in back to your car, catching the eye of two curious and confused chanders as you flee the scene. However, you're just about to start the car. Here's burner phone begins to ding multiple times. You check and see that he's receiving mes receiving multiple messages from boss. Wow. Wrap up, clean up, get to head office. We need to talk. Alien footage came back at long last. I've got a good look at the stray. You have work to do. Good. You arrive back in Mules without much delay. You estimate you've only been gone for around... Really? Half hour? That was honestly quick. Quick ring at the live door and Mia buzzes you in. She meets you in the hall. Yay, you came back! I didn't doubt you for a second. But I mean, that storm out there is pretty serious business. You could have been washed out to sea and become a pirate or something. Everything okay? I'm trying to make my hand look like a pirate hook on the way. A bit of a, a bit of excitement but nothing to worry about. That's good to hear. The last thing I want to associate with Tropical Storm is too much excitement. Oh, by the way, my own plans later this evening just completely freed up. So... Wanna play some board games and drink wine? Or should I beat your butt at one of my video games while we drink wine? Or, I mean, we have a few hours. We could... you know... Mia reaches up and rubs the surface of her bed, her eyes becoming somehow both soft and wild. We could play a completely different kind of game. Hmm. Cut. And we're back. The two of you spoon for some time, and at some point Mia finally falls asleep. You gingerly slip away from her embrace and quietly leave the room. Turn off every piece of electronic in this room. It's that moment that you feel the buzz of a phone vibrating in your pocket. You're surprised to find it's Harris's phone. The message on, on the front screen is from a boss. We know what you did to it. See you later. When you attempt to send a message in reply, hair pops up quickly. Message not sent. Putting the phone away, you check one last time on Mio 
and decide it's time to go. You have a feeling Mio is no longer in danger, but there is more to do. You leave quietly, locking, locking the door behind you. The drive home is dark and quiet. So that was just 30 minutes of recording this, so um, as of right now I am going to save this and I'm going to go to bed and hopefully finish this uh, tomorrow at the time of this recording. It is currently August 5th, 2024 at almost 10.40pm, so I'm going to finish this tomorrow. Session two, we're gonna try to complete this today. For um, the Hush Hush playthrough, I'm a little nervous. Well, here we go. The drive to Chief Kwase's apart place is treacherous. The rain is pouring in buckets, and you hydroplane several times on otherwise unremarkable roads. The storm boils. When you finally reach Saji's place, he's waiting for you. He's waiting outside for you. Away from the flash of police lights, he appears much more elderly, much less menacing. He signals for you to park and come inside. As you enter, you hear him bark from the kitchen just outside. Shoes off! The order hangs in the air for a moment. But is followed shortly after by. Please remove your shoes. My shoes are over there. You walk inside. There's a there's a pot of tea with two teacups set out on a table. Saji is sitting already, like a grim statue of Buddha. His expression is made of stone. Sit. We will speak. Okay. Thank you for coming to speak with me. It must not have been easy making the journey. Doing the right thing is never hard. Perhaps... Perhaps you've never faced a true test of your character. Or perhaps you have better character than I. An interesting thought. First... I must apologize. When we last spoke, I suspected you were a bad person. I mistook your actions with my daughter for taking advantage of her. I believe now that I was wrong. I'm still not very sure what exactly you're up to. But I spoke with Eli and with Detective Zweihanda. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing, I'm now convinced you are only trying to protect Iro. It'll be the last thing I do before I leave. I am sorry. I was foolish and only succeeded in hurting Iro. Apology accepted. You are very patient and understanding. I would not have been so quick to forgive. It is humbling. Right now, Iro is not answering my calls. She is not answering calls from Eli or Kari or other friends. She is hiding from the world and she is hurting. And right now, 
This behavior is more concerning than ever. What has Hiro told you about her mother? <clears throat> Hiro told me her mother passed away. The anniversary of her passing is soon. Yes, I see. That alone shows me that she must trust you deeply. Hiro's mother passed away when Hiro was very young. And the circumstances were very tragic. Hiro was there when it happened. No, I cannot speak of these things. I do not need to know this to help Hiro. Tell me everything, Mr. Kwase. Hiro's life might depend on it. Mm. Yes, I will tell you everything. My wife, her name was Rain. She drowned when Hiro was only six years old. Always, Rain loved surfing. She was world class, professional. On the day she died, she and Hiro had gone to the beach to surf the monster waves. Every year, the storm comes. Every year it brings waves. Every year, the waves call to rain. When I was home. Eli was only three. I hate surfing. But rain would take you. Tell her to watch mommy. Show her how to surf the monster waves. Always, Hiro would surf with her mom. But during the storm, never. Family friend come to watch Hiro while her mom is surfing. But friend becomes distracted. Stops watching her for a moment. And... Well... Rain drowned, saving Hiro from the waves. And Hiro blames me. Because you weren't there to help? No. Because I brought danger to our family. During this time, I was not police chief. I was detective. Working with Subrosa PD's drug task force. I was much younger then. Very handsome. That is how I married Ido's mom. My partner and I had successfully busted major drug ring bringing down many powerful criminals. As a result, my partner and I received many threats. We are going to kill your family. We are going to take your children. Your family will pay for what you did. Many, many threats. They did not stay threats. One year after our major bust, my partner went missing. Just gone. Like that. Never heard from him again. Case is cold. Me? I was very scared for my family. I told Rain we should move, but she was fearless. She did not want to live anywhere but Subrosa. One day, we are arguing about it. I tell Rain how guilty I feel that I put her and the kids in danger. Only. Hiro overhears this. And now she thinks her daddy is bad. But he makes it dangerous for his family. S Sorry, I don't understand. How, how does that make you responsible for your wife's accident? It does not. But for young Hiro, it did. I am called by search and rescue. I leave Eli with Neva. I rush to beach as fast as I can drive. When I get there, they have pulled little Iro from the water. She is okay. Also, they have pulled my rain. She is 
not okay. Ido is screaming and crying. When I run to her, she is so mad at me. She tells me it is my fault. She is hysterical. When everything is over, Iro did not speak any words for two months. Many therapists work with her. They say she is traumatized. She is heartbroken. And she never forgives me. But I think it is because the truth is too haunting for her to look at. That it was her fault. Only as much as a little girl can be at fault. She only ran into the ocean where her mom was. But I think Iro will blame herself if she tries to make peace with it. Now, every year on the anniversary of her mother's passing, Iro gets more and more reckless. She tries more racing her motorcycle, jumping off tall places, dangerous stunts, fighting. On this year, I think she will go surfing when the monster waves come. But Irai tells me that when you showed up, Iro stops so much these dangerous things that she talks more love and happiness and that she would not go surfing at all. And I have ruined it. So, no matter what you think of me, will you please go to Iro? Will you check on her? Will you try to undo my mistake? Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Eli said he dropped by Iro's beach house, but no one was home. I will still check there first. When Iro is sad, she does not stray far from her garage and her crossfit. If she is there, maybe she will show herself to you. Good luck. My Iro was very lucky to have met you. You could say it was almost fate. I do not believe in such things. But if you can't help her, be safe. The drive to Eros Beach House is somewhat less treacherous. Treacherous. The downpour relents a little, and you don't feel like your front wheel drive car is going to float away in a flash flood. Even so, it takes you twice as long to reach Eros Beach House. You step out of the car through an intense wind, you rush to Eero's porch and knock loudly on the door. After several minutes of knocking and calling her name, you start to look around the rest of the property. And quickly find Eero in the garage, sitting on the floor. Sally leaned against her bike. Hey. I'm not home right now. You must be one of her brothers. Are you all rainbow-haired and insanely attractive? No, only Eli. So, I'm sorry I punched you. I feel really terrible about that. No matter what happens between us, no matter what happens between me and my father, you didn't deserve it. You can probably guess that there's a deep problem between my father and I. But no one should have to deal with it other than me. I believe the moment any person puts their hands on another person in anger, they've lost the argument. If you're hitting someone, it's to defend yourself or defend others who can't. It's not for getting anger off your chest on someone you actually care deeply about. I hope you will forgive me. <laughs> that was a punch. Hero looks shocked for a moment, 
and a very small, weary, wry smile appears just for a moment on her face. You're a bastard, you know that? I felt a sudden need to smack talk and defend my right cross. You're really good at getting in my head. I'm glad we're friends. Well, I'm not sure what we are right now, but I'm glad we're not enemies. But thank you. That's the weirdest apology accepted I've ever heard, but thanks. Okay, I think I've got the whole picture. We can go our separate ways now. Don't worry about me. I'll get over this. I always do. You're holding on to something. I think you've been holding on to it for a long time. Tell me what it is. Your looks up, and you surprised. For a moment, she starts to speak, but you can see anger and hesitation, and fear flash across her expressions. She gets mad, balls her fists, but remains quiet. And then she takes a deep sigh. <sighs> yeah. You're right. You're probably the most observant person I've ever met. Since I dragged you in, I'll tell you. When I was a lot younger, I used to spend a lot of time with my mom. She taught me how to surf, how to skate, how to do everything that I love. Back then, my father was a very serious man. He didn't show much affection to his family. He was very, very harsh with his sons, especially Eli. He was always very busy with work. A policeman, going after very dangerous criminals. One time, he solved a case that brought many, many people to justice. Powerful, wealthy people. People with ties to the community. People with ties to the government. He was hailed as a hero. But the consequences of his work were that his family, us, always felt we were in danger. We got letters and messages that said they were going to kill us. Strangers on the street would tell my mom that she was going to be killed. That I was going to be taken away. It got so bad that the police asked my father to go into protective custody. But my mom refused. She was very attached to this town. To the ocean and the forest here. She didn't want to be chased away. And she was the only one that made us feel safe. As most moms would. She was my hero. <laughs> but something did happen. Yes. I didn't realize it at the time, but the fear did have an effect on my mom. She became more bold with her thrill-seeking. She started drinking more. And I didn't realize it back then. But she was becoming depressed. Which finally resulted in her taking the ultimate risk. Something she had wanted to do since she was young, but knew was too dangerous. I think I told you about this tropical storm going on. It hits Sabrosa every year. And every year, it brings these incredible waves. Huge monster waves. The kind professional surfers dream about. And when the conditions are right, you can indeed surf them. But there are conditions where you shouldn't. When the danger is too high. When the storm is too intense. And my mom decided to surf in those conditions. And no one stopped her? No. My father didn't know anything about the surfing. No one who saw what happened was as experienced as my mom. How could they second guess her? My mom brought me and a friend along when she went surfing that day. She wanted me to see that fear couldn't stop her from doing what she loved. And she went out in the water just as the other storm surfers were coming in. Just as things were becoming much too dangerous. What happened next? This is where it's hard to remember. Things happened so fast. I remember being worried for my mom. 
I could tell she was afraid. She had this look in her eyes. The same look she got when people told her she was going to be killed. When they told her I was going to be taken. She went out anyway, and I remember cheering for her. But, but at some point, I lost track of her. The waves were so large, and the water was so choppy. And I was worried she needed help. I remember I got so afraid that I started calling for my dad. It got to be too much to handle. So when my babysitter was distracted, that's when I grabbed a surfboard and ran to go help her. You went out into the ocean, but you were, what, six years old? Yes, only six. And that's where my memory gets wonky. I remember my mom and I on a surfboard, but the surfboard getting ripped away by a wave. I remember holding on to a life ring by myself. The weird rubber feeling on my arms and the rope line hurting my fingers. I remember my mom's hand. And her voice. I remember my dad coming when it was too late. And that's all I can remember. If that was the last view that I saw my mom before she drowned, I would be just as terrified as zero and traumatized as well. I was so mad at my father for making mom so scared that she disappeared into the ocean for failing to save her for not crying at her funeral and i've never forgiven him you said you remember floating on a life ring where did it come from you didn't take one surfing did you no, I didn't, but I'm not sure why that's... I mean, my mom didn't bring it out. She was a lifeguard. She swam all the time with that. The life ring. I do remember holding on to it. That's what I was holding on to when... Oh no. The life ring. Mom had it. She must have gone to shore when I was... Oh no. Oh no. Hero jumps to her feet in a panic. A deep tread washes over her face and makes her pale. She turns. Hero, tell me the rest. No! It can't be! I didn't! I didn't mean to! No, 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 no! Where did the life ring come from? Why did mom have it? I didn't. I killed my mom. Hero. It's not, it wasn't your fault. I did! I went out into the ocean! It's my fault she's dead! No! No, what did I do? 
She was okay. She got away from the waves. This is all my fault. Hero, it wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. I killed my mom. I killed my mom. Oh, no. Oh, my God, no. Please. It wasn't your fault. so important. I've been so mad at my dad all these years for driving my mom into the ocean. But she made it back. She must have. And then she went back out for me. How? Don't blame yourself. You're a kid. No one could have expected you to deal with trauma like that. I guess I was keeping it from myself in a way. Transferring blame. And my father, who never cries at funerals, became my long-term scapegoat. Where do I even go from here? How do I pick up all these pieces? Everybody who cares about you is ready to help, including your father. <sighs> including you? Yes. I... I can't tell you how much that means to me. I... I want to make love with you. Oh, cut! I know our time together is short. I know any day now I'm going to lose you. I know the future is foggy and scary and isn't prone to letting people be happy. But you've helped me so much. And when I'm near you, I feel this electricity inside of me. Before circumstances interrupt us, before life finds a way for me to mess things up again, I promise, if the answer is no, I won't be hurt. But if you want to, I want to. Hero <sighs> kisses you back. She puts her hand delicately on your chin. And the two of you share a soft, intimate moment together. Cut. We're back later after a long time spent in warm silence. Still embracing on her bike. <laughs> oh my god. Hero kisses her cheek softly and says, what? I should let my family know I'm okay. They've all been worried about me. And I need to call my dad. I suspect things are going to be complicated for a while. Would you make me a promise? Promise me you won't leave town before saying goodbye. 
I just want to make sure I see you again. Hopefully on a calmer day. Will you? When I make a promise, I keep it. Thank you. I'll see you again. As you drive off, you have an immense feeling of victory, and you know with uncanny sur surety that Eero is now safe. One of the destined maidens is safe from harm. The storm is not yet over. And that's all. Holy crap, we did it. That was longer than, well, I did confess some things, so, <laughs> but whatever. And the reason, the reason why I didn't cry at that is because, uh, that was the moment in the game that I remember the most. It was the best moment in the entire thing. It it is just it is just it was just wonderful performance by by Rachel Messer. Just an absolute pure emotion poured into that. It was that is the that is overall the best part of this game <laughs> and I I'm so glad that I was like I I was so glad to experience that again just so I'm reminded of Rachel Messer's phenomenal work in the voice acting industry but now that I've recorded for over half an hour now might as well just do L's final chapter Let's do it. And so you're getting ready to leave for Elle's house, an extremely loud blast of thunder rattles the house. Quill is thinking ref refuge under your bed, along with several loads of laundry for good measure. Okay. You open the front door to pick out, and are surprised to see garbage cans and shopping carts tumbling down the streets like leaves. It's like that one video on the internet. <laughs> the wind is howling. The sounds of branches breaking fill the air as well, and even the shocks on your car whine as the gusts push push on its side. The storm is now on the verge of becoming a full hurricane. An early report said the main storm would make landfall tonight, but it appears to be earlier than expected. It looks very, very likely that a drive would be a bad idea. Just as you're considering your next move, suddenly your phone rings.
Well, I'm not sure. Weather seems like the worst reason to cancel a date. I understand completely. I often second guess whether to cancel my plans to go to the farmer's market if it's raining a little. But in this case, I'm fairly certain the farmer's market isn't even open now. Too many farmers blew away. So maybe we too should change our plans. Like the proud and noble farmer. Sorry. I'm just joking because I am genuinely afraid for you. Do you think maybe it would be best to change our plans tonight? We could try a remote date, talk on the phone, or switch it so we can see each other. Or just reschedule to tomorrow. Tonight is supposed to be the worst of it. We can just pretend tonight is tomorrow. What do you think? I want to see you. I can handle it. Trust me. Oh, goodness. You're really going out there? You're really, really? Oh my gosh. I'm going to be worried sick. Okay, but just to incentivize you and inspire you to make it here safely, I was hoping maybe we could, uh, take a bath tonight? Er, I mean, like together. A bath together? I want to make love to you in the bath, so get over here right away. And don't you dare blow away. <laughs> See you soon. Knowing that the drive to Wells will likely kill you, you decide to jog instead. After all, you, you always see reporters out in storms like this. Getting a blowjob from hurricane force winds? Why not you? What would normally take about 10 minutes to drive and maybe 20 minutes to jog takes you over an hour. But you make it and you flip the storm. And you flip the storm, the bird on your On your way up to Elle's door, huh? When you knock, she throws open the door right away. She's wearing a towel and looks incredibly concerned. Oh my gosh! It took you so long! I was so worried! Did you run here? Oh, where are you getting my messages? You're freezing! Oh, let me take your temperature. We might need... <laughs> Bruh. Did it do? When you finally stop, every inch of her face is blushing, and she breathes a bill, bill word, bewildered sigh. Phew! I well, it seems that you're feeling all right. That's very good. Elle takes you by the hand into her bathroom, where you see a fancy cloth tub in the middle of the room. In the middle of the bathroom. Look! At the top! It's a family portrait. That must be Miss Reed, Mrs. Reed, Mr. Reed, Dorian, and Elle. She leans over to the tub and turn on the faucet. And you get a brief. Well, she she is wearing a towel, so I mean that's gonna be bound to happen. So, and that's just a fact. That never mind. <laughs> As the tub fills, Ella turns to you and smiles. She slowly addresses you, taking time to care. Karen gently pull down each pin like did to do a dog. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> it's still on, baby. In turn, you gently pull 
pull apart the fold in her towel, allowing the soot off. She laughs nervously and then takes her hands and wraps it around her. Oh, that's nice. Ready? Okay, I didn't expect this cut this time actually to wash. Okay, cool. You lie together. Listening to the rain and wind outside. The sun just came out at the time of this recording. When I began recording, it was raining, so, uh... Hey, the sun's out. I hope nothing terrible happens tonight. Just then you... Wait. Just then you hear the front door open and someone call for L. L? Where are you? Elle sits up in the bath, startled. That's... that's Dorian! Okay, don't ch Remember editing me. Remember what you have done these past couple of videos. <laughs> What's he doing here? I don't know, but it's not good. Quick! I don't want him to find you here like this. Quickly hide behind that screen. You do as she instructs, quickly grabbing a towel and ducking behind a large folding screen at the end of the room. You hear Dorian coming up the stairs. Elle, are you here? Are you sleeping? <clears throat> I'm in the bath, Dorian. Why are you here? It's too dangerous outside to be visiting anyone. I was worried about you. And I needed to speak to you. You're having a bath. That's... Well, speaking of safety, why would you do that? It's very clearly on the too risky list. I know, Dorian. I've taken precautions. Listen, why don't we talk later? I'll dry off and get dressed. If the storm calms a bit, I'll come up to the estate. I'll make us tea. It can't wait, Elle. I'll just come talk to you. And then it'll be done. Dorian, I'm not decent. Here. Also, by the way, my glasses were reflecting. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, this isn't good. This is far from good. Dorian is in Nell's house. And I can't call the police because if I try, he would hear me and I would die. Dorian reaches into the bathroom and shuts off the light. Why? You fucking creep. Now your dignity is intact. Okay, I'm just... <gasps> Gosh, look at you, Elle. When you moved into Mother's old house, I recall standing in this room, wondering what a shame it was. The tub, I mean. I recall thinking this beautiful clawfoot tub would go largely to waste, given that you couldn't. Well, given that such bathing required at least a chaperone. And here you are. You've changed so much in the last few weeks. It's astounding. Dorian, you shouldn't be in here. It isn't appropriate. What? You mean, you being naked? We've seen each other naked many times, El. Do you remember the nude beaches in Ibiza? Or the sweat lodges father used to take us to? Where is all this coming from? This hostility? You've been acting strange since my birthday. Throwing me into the water, that gift you got me, 
completely out of character for you. I'm worried, El. I'm worried something is influencing you. I'm worried someone may be taking advantage of you. Dorian, listen to me. I am your sister. I am a grown woman. I get to decide who sees me naked, who touches me, who kisses me. And it will never be you. So you need to leave, right now. Hmm. <laughs> I know that this is the doing of that promiscuous asshole you let into our house. I told you already. They've been seen going out with a dozen women. One of them is a known criminal. Another is the police chief's daughter. What does that sound like to you, El? Does that sound like the actions of a good person? Thank the goddesses you aren't intimate with them. Who knows what plague you could catch from a person like that. Damn. <laughs> Elsie sees you and her eyes momentarily flickering in your direction, but she makes no other movements. I did have sex with them, Dorian. What? <laughs> with the added height of the foot claw tub, she now stands ah, slightly taller than Dor. Damn, that's a that's a big tub. Dorian, I am not your property. I am not your lover. I am not a doll for you to dress. I am not a pet for you to bring to heal. I am your sister, and that is all I am. And every bad thing in my life is your fault. Hell steps out of the tub, her one arm still holding her breast, while the other levels an, an accusatory finger at Dorian. You are going to leave me alone now, forever. You will not call me. You will not visit. You will travel far away, and you will lose my number and my email, and you will not speak my name. And the next time you dream about touching your sister, or kissing her, or undressing her, or having sex with her, you will hire a therapist to help you talk those demons out of you. But they will not haunt me anymore. Now leave. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Elle turns her back and gingerly steps back into the tub. Dorian stands in sun silence, so complacent in his bewilderment that for an entire minute he can't even turn toward Elle. <laughs> You see rage spark in his face, a grimace of wrath, a grimace of wrath, pity, and exposed. Now you listen to me. You are a barely functioning, disabled, ignorant ingrate. This family has done more for you, sacrificed more for you, than anything anyone could call reasonable. Elle closes her eyes, turning away from Dorian, and lays back as though returning to her bath in earnest. Goodbye, Dorian. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I am not finished. You have done nothing but demonstrate that the allowances made for you have led you down promiscuity and ruin. You have whored yourself out to the first stranger who's not repulsed by your disability. That is not strength. It is disgusting. Goodbye, Dorian. You stupid, slow, clumsy bitch of a sister. All I have ever shown you is more kindness than you deserve. More loving patience than you ever earned. Goodbye, Dorian. And if you think I'm going to let you throw your life away for some casual hookup, you're mistaken. 
Goodbye, Dorian. I will see you penniless. I have power of attorney over your trust. I can direct your inheritance away. Goodbye, Dorian. I will take this house! I will have you remanded to psychiatric care! I will make sure everyone in this town knows you're a slut! Goodbye, Dorian. Please turn the light on, on your way out. <sighs> Fuck Dorian. <laughs> Dorian, for a moment, stands utterly dumbfounded. <laughs> I want to say it, <laughs> but it's too fucking good. <laughs> But I don't want to. But I don't want to say it out loud because I know all the subscribers. <laughs> uh, Ella continues on my back, her eyes closed, as though relaxing without a care in the world. <laughs> it's so good. I I just can't get it out of my head. <laughs> oh Jesus, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Dorian paces back and forth, just just once. You can see the anger and frustration building on his face. Then, an uncanny calmness comes to him. You see his face become tranquil, his eyes become distant and dead. He calmly reaches over and turns the light back on. Very well, sister. We shall burn our house and all our bridges and call it justice. Yes, Ire, the Esila. So that's a Kermit family! Even as you speak the words, Dorian has already moved to grab a vase. When you finally say the phrase. What? What did you say? Those eyes snap open and see Dorian with a weapon. They sent you. Dorian looks around the room in a panic. Suddenly there's a long crash, the entire house shakes like a violent earthquake, and the lights flicker. Oh god. You slip, nearly falling to the ground, but Dorian runs from the room. You chase after him into Elle's, Elle's bedroom and see that the entire wall has been ripped open. A large tree has fallen, crashing through the wall, crushing nearly everything in the room. Dorian leaps onto the tree and slips down its trunk with unnatural dexterity. You run, down the, you run downstairs, but you hear his car screech down the street. Damn it, he escaped. Elle rushes to you, to her side in a towel she sees the damage in her room. I can't believe he, he tried to hurt me again. I never thought he would do something like that again. Hurting me would burn his entire world down. He's so much worse than I even imagined. What's happening? I don't know what those words you said to him meant, but I think you need to stop him. Whatever he's doing, I know that he's hurting others. But you have to be careful. He has all these people working for him. Scary, terrible people. I think they're criminals. And I'm not sure where he goes while he's working. But for some reason, he's afraid of you. And that's the first time I've ever seen him afraid of anything. I'm going to get dressed and go to Bonnabelle's. She said if I get scared during the storm, I could stay with her. Dorian will have no idea where I am. Let me know when it's safe. I love you. I love you too. Grabs their things. A short while later, bon Bonnabelle comes to pick her up. It turns out she drives a badass off from the SUV. 
That's good. We decided next move. Is to go back to base and uh, chill out there for a little while. It is session three at the time of this recording. I got back from work an hour ago, so so uh, I think it's time that we finally end this. Let's see how long this takes. The car ride to the pizzeria is strange. By now, the storm has completely blown itself out, crashing against the shore and the Rocky Mountains beyond. The near hurricane force winds meet their match and subside. However, there is still a strange electricity in the air, a hot, humid feeling that makes the hairs on arms and legs stand on end. You've never seen a more formidable sunset or felt so stifled by silence. There are no birds singing. The ocean is oddly calm. Somehow it's all worse than the rain. Regardless, your trip was uneventful. You arrived safely and spot Cassie standing outside the pizzeria. In the light, she almost seems to be made of paper and glass. Excuse me. And your heart aches to see her. As though to break the tension, she spots you. And hey, looking for a good time, sexy. Well, Tom, the good times are over. It's the end of the month, and that means we're running out of time. So hurry and park, so we can buy you some pizza. You step out of the car. And Cassie runs over to you. You scoop up and you scoop her up in a hug, spinning her around in the air. She laughs and squeals with joy. <laughs> You're gonna make me dizzy. <laughs> Help! Okay, good work. You're right on time. This is quite possibly the most important time of the day. Because this is when we need you to all the bright slice pizzas on sale. Come on. You all can see two boxes of pizza on the counter. Cassie, here you go. Box them up for you early. Ten dollars. to Luigi His... <laughs> I think that's what happened <laughs> when they made the voice acting transition last year when uh, Mr. Mr. Charles Martinet himself retired from voicing Mario and Luigi Wario Waluigi you know the whole shebang and uh, is this what happened to Luigi getting doing chain smoking <laughs> and now he sounds like that one character from The Simpsons. <laughs> uh, that's just a funny thought to me. Aw, nice. Usually Luigi won't put them in nice boxes for me. I told him it was a special occasion. He's a true Italiano, you see. A softie for the romantic ship. Thanks, Luigi. You go to reach into your wallet, but... Cassie slaps your hand away. I got the cash. No, Ben, it's my treat tonight. Okay. Cassie reaches into her shirt and pulls out a bag of bills. Out of her bra, uh, of course. The never mind. Uh, all one dollar bills. <laughs> she counts out ten, then an extra two for her tip. I'm hungry. No problem. You're in for a treat. Cool. Luigi always puts a fresh pie on just before the dinner rush, but some nights it barely gets touched, and I think tonight we're in luck. Pizza. Pizza. Cassie leads you around to the back of the pizzeria, 
where you follow her up to an alleyway and stop outside her apartment door. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. This is my place. Actually, it used to be Nell's place. But then it was Nell's and my place. And now it's mine. Oh. And I would like to take you up there. There's no time like the present. <laughs> Unhand me, brute! You're ruining the build-up! I have more awkward things to say down on the street! <laughs> You're gonna make me drop the pizza! <laughs> Oh, not the pizza. <laughs> not the pizza! Okay, when you reach the front door, Cassie takes a moment to take a deep breath before reaching for her key. Before she can turn it, she quickly pulls it away and says... Oh, I just remembered. I didn't clean up. I... Whatever, come in. Watch where you sit. You don't get a bad view out of that out of that little patio. There's Chinese on their chair. Right away, you see quite a few old pizza boxes scattered here and there. The whole apartment is one room, and there's and there's very little terms of furniture. Just a couch, chair, desk, bed. Dishes are piled in the sink, but not bad. It's not quite squatter level. It's more like college dorm. Well, what do you think? Don't you fucking say it's very me, or else I'm gonna smack you, so help me! You look like a samurai turtle. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Oh, you mean like the cartoon! Yeah, I remember that reporter girl. What was her name? May? <laughs> wow, I used to want to be a reporter. Cause she was cool. <laughs> I'm owning this samurai turtle thing. Owning it! Alright, let's eat! Come sit with me on the bed. We gotta eat the pizza before Grease attaches half the box to the bottom. Cassie sits with you on the bed and opens the boxes. She gets a certain sparkle in her eye when she sees the pizzas, one of which is missing a few slices. Oops. Aw, oh, boss, there's olives on this one tonight. Is this the house special? Oh, no. Oh, that Luigi. Sicilian, it's my favorite. That Luigi, I tell ya. He's a real class act. I mean, if I were the whole body type, I'd probably just marry him and start giving him babies. But I hate kids, so it's a lonely apartment for me. Sorry, I'm blabbing. Just excited for pizza. <laughs> Grab a slice. So how often do you get pizza? I don't know if I agree with the basis of your question. Next. Hand me that slice with the extra olives. Yeah, there we go. What's with the random wood pallets over there? Duh, do you know how useful those things are? You can make, like, a bench out of them, or a bookshelf or something. I don't know, do I look like a wood carpenter? You got a little schmutz here. <laughs> One sec. There you go. What's with all the junk on your desk? Oh, I went to a job fair once, because they were offering free pe free coffee. <laughs> so I signed up for a bunch of newsletters and junk. You know, for like, school and stuff. Anyway, they send me stuff, I read it. I don't know, maybe 
Maybe someday I'll do something about it. Did you grab napkins? No. <laughs> Hand me that shirt right there. I can even fold it so it'll look fancy. You were really excited to buy me dinner. Well, yeah. I don't know. It sounds really silly whenever I say it out loud, but... For me, there's something about feeding someone else that just lets them know how special they are to you. I know, right? Super dumb, but whatever. A hot guy comes up to me and says, I just want to feed you. And I'm getting tingly and looking for a ring to put on that. <laughs> anyway, whatever. It is what it is. I just wanted to buy you dinner once. On my own. With my own money. And a Luigi discount. <laughs> Don't forget. He doesn't just hand those out. I'm special. So... A lot of shit's been going down the last ten days. It wasn't just the bullshit I called you about that scared the bejesus out of me. Lots of other people are feeling it too. I haven't even been asked to run product anywhere in... two weeks-ish. Apparently, things have fallen apart upstairs. Don't know what it means. Don't know if any heat's gonna fall on me. But as you know, I owe these people a lot of money. Like, a lot, a lot. And even if everyone above me gets busted, someone else is sure to come along and make good on that bill. So I don't think my problems are gonna go away, one way or another. You may as well eat pizza. How much money do you owe them? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not gonna tell you that. A girl's gotta have some dignity, right? Some secrets. I tell you that number. Well, then that number becomes the size of the problem. The size of the me problem. Just forget I said anything. How much? No, stop it! All right, can we focus on the pizza here? If I can batch press it, you got you have to tell me. Tell me. Oh, what the hell? When am I ever gonna get an offer like that? <laughs> Don't drop me! <laughs> oh god, it's in my head again. Hey, big guy, get on top of me! Glock, 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 glock. She crosses her arms and holds her whole body rigid. You can count down. One, two, three. As she only weighs around 100 pounds, it's actually rather easy. But you throw in some grunts and groans to give her a thrill. After 30 reps, you set her down. <laughs> that was fun. I mean, it was sort of weird and dumb and whatever, but fun. You can bench press me anytime, sweet cheeks. As of last month, I still owe around $86,000. That's gonna take a few more years to pay back. I've been thinking of picking up a part-time job, but... Liliana's been hinting she might get me to deal right on the street. Which... I hope not. It's... Much easier pretending I'm not a terrible person when I don't have to look anyone in the eye. Thank you for telling me. Hey, you asked! I just hope you're not throwing me a pity party in your head or nothing. I mean, I know I don't look it sometimes. 
Climb tough. See? Hmm. Oh, here. Check this out. Oh, boy. I've been doing all these back exercises. See? By the way, you're basically the only person who's going to care about this junk. Anyway, feel my upper back and shoulders. Feel them. Give them a squeeze. Nice, eh? Now give my glutes a squeeze. I'm in great shape. You also squeeze your glutes, which are exceptionally toned. Not bad, huh? I've actually been trying to take a little better care of myself. Last year sometime, I basically stopped eating. Because I had no money. I wound up dropping like 25 pounds from where I am now. I had to buy this sparkle belt from the thrift store for 75 cents because none of my clothes were fitting anymore. Anyway, that was before. This is now. And I'm not doing too bad, if you ask me. Although, just a side note, those shoulder squeezes felt pretty nice. Hint? Yeah. Oh, wow. Your hands are like dummy strong. <laughs> what the hell? What are you squeezing every day to get thumbs that... Oh, God. You have chest shoulders, her, her shoulder blades, her neck. At first, she ex she exaggerates how good it feels, so as to encourage you to continue. Oh my God! Best massage ever. But after a few minutes, she becomes more and more quiet until she until she's mostly communicating in a happy, soft sigh. As you work your way down to her lower back, she unexpectedly reaches over her shoulder and pulls. Then she moves the lie face down. Baby, you're so good to me. Cut. My camera stopped recording. What? Huh? Okay, I'm I'm here. <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> okay, back. So my uh, camera turned off for some reason. Uh, it's uh, going just fine. I hope that all stayed in. <laughs> if not, I still I still have audio, so we're we're good. Shortly after her phone buzzes, you check it. Get over here and need to talk now. You decide that that's a good idea. You get up, take Cassie's phone, stop only to grab one more slice of pizza, and get out of there. The drive to the warehouse is bad. The sun gl the sun's clear is cold, the water in your water bottle is warm and plastic. When you arrive at the warehouse and notice more than a few cars there. Most of the street gang must be inside. Going in by yourself is likely going to be incredibly dangerous. And what's your plan? You dial Fumi's number and she picks up right away. This is Detective Fumi. Speak quickly. My time is incredibly valuable. You explain where you are. That you have evidence of the gang's activities. And maybe their ringleader. Alright, I'm coming. I'm bringing all the guns. Fifteen minutes out! Don't do anything stupid until I get there. <laughs> Click! With that done, you get out you get out of your car and walk into the warehouse. Hey fuckers! Welcome, stranger. <laughs> I thought. I guess we're going to finish this. Tell me what you want. 
I have a secret. A very big, important, life-changing secret. Tell me what it is. Taking a moment, recalling every step that led to this moment. The way forward seems clear. Tell me where Dorian is. Lilian's eyes widen in shock and horror. She staggers back. A ghost! How do you know that name? He's at the Sabrosa Landsmark building. Top floor. But he'll know you're coming. He always knows. Get out of there. Just as you're pulling away, you see more than two dozen police cars and vans come screaming into the parking lot. You catch a glimpse of Detective Fumi in your rearview mirror somewhere ahead of you in the darkness. The Sub Rosa Landmark building looms. However, you sense you have one last loose end to tie up, a feline friend with, with a final secret. So you turn your car towards home. The final day. Dawn of the final morning. Well, this is it. Hey, the storm is passing, which is good because water falling from the sky is unnatural. Can't say hi to me when you can. Okay, I have a funny feeling I'm going to lose my phone, so I should go. Bye. Alright, for the time being, I am going to pause and I'm going to eat dinner. And I'm back. Uh, I had to get a quick bite of dinner before doing the final chapter of the game with Quill. Get back to steam. By the time you've made it home, the storm has finally passed. The storm clouds finally break into pieces with fluffy white clouds scattering in all directions. The dreadful humidity finally leaves the air. Your flight home is in a few hours, and as far as you know, there's no other loose ends to tie up. Save for your unusual roommate. You park in the driveway one last time and start to approach the house. You notice a few fat birds watching you hesitantly from the tree, but otherwise no other soul is present. You open the, door, the front door and call for Will, but there is no immediate answer. Screech searching upstairs and down, still calling her name. It's only when you get to the kitchen that you, you finally hear her fly through the window. You! Out here! I mean the garden! Right there. Going out to going out the back door, you enter the garden and you immediately spot Quill kneeling before kneeling over some potted plants. She appears to be giving them a pep talk. Now I know that sometimes I like to chew on you guys before you're ready. I have apologized for this in the past, but it's an ongoing issue, and the apology deserves renewal. So I just want all of you to know that I will try my absolute hardest not to nibble on a single bud until you're all feeling better. I know many of you got way too much water and wind, and none of us appreciated the extra thunder this year. So do your best. And I'll keep the back door locked if the temptation is getting too much. That should keep you safe, at least for a little while. Okay, team meeting over. Dismissed. Hello, <sighs> oh, isn't it a beautiful day? This is my favorite time of year, and no one is trying to kill me. I imagine the lack of thunder and lightning is also a bonus. Oh yes, very true. I used to not be too worried about those things until they became permanently etched in my psyche as reminders of my friend's murder. I imagine it'll take at least a few months to get over that sort of thing. So now that everything is back to normal, are you going to stay? Or are you going back to where you came from? I would like to put in a kitty vote for you to stay, but I'm perfectly happy if you'd rather go back to your own litter box.
I might be back. I might be back in the future. Maybe give the town a chance to cool down from all my interfering. You should try to never let the place you're napping cool down while you're away. But I'll keep a spare sunbeam ready for you, in case you ever wander back into town. Now that things can get back to normal, there's a lot of stuff for me to do. There's the garden, of course, but there's also some mice in the basement I need to evict. Not to mention laying in the sink with the water on. Just a little. It gives me a thrill! Like I'm being a naughty kitty. But I feel like maybe you have some questions for me still? I wasn't the most polite conversationalist while I was freaking out around you. So, do you have anything puzzling your poor brain that I could help with? So your friend, they were looking, they were looking for other girls to save, just like me. Yes, they told me that they had a dream about two ladies with very big bazoongas. <laughs> they got really kissy kissy with him and told him that a bunch of us were going to die. So it was nice of him to come and try to make that not happen. Did your friend give you warm feelings? Not like you. Holy moles! He was very nice, but he didn't have everything you have. Like your face and your voice. Thanks. I work on this deep voice a lot. Kinda sounds like Master Chief. No one's ever made me feel like you. What else do you want to know? So, where are you going to go? Where's your home? This is my house, silly. This is my garden. That's my tree. Those are my birds, but don't tell them because they get grouchy. So, when I found you the first week I was here? Yes. When I got scared in the alley, I ran home as quickly as I could. I'm sorry if I fibbed about it. I had to be sure that you were nice to kitties. I also needed to stop being scared. And we did it! Yay! This is fun. I feel like I know all the things. And you don't know any of the things. Do you know who it was who was after you? No. Though I knew he was someone you had seen a few times. Because sometimes you came home and smelled a little like him. It might have been easier if you could have given me that information at the beginning. Yeah, I agree. What else do you want to know? Just one more question. Are you absolutely sure you're a kitty? Very sure. Okay. Well, thank you for saving me again. It was very kind of you. I dub the friend of all kitties from now until the end of your nine lives. Yay! Yay. How much longer do you have until you leave? My flight's in a couple hours, why? I just had a question for you. I just want to know if... The... Cut! At last, you make your way to your car. Quill waves at you from the window. As does suck. You wave back one last time and then drive away. Oh my gosh, I just realized that today is your last day in Sabrosa. I have so much to say to you, so many things I need to know. I need you to know. Speed run! And I'm so happy that I did. Yeah, maybe. Please give me your digital deeds. Even if we can't be together, we can always gain. All the best. 
Love me. Oh my, I just looked at the calendar. I didn't notice today is the day you're leaving. I just need to tell you some things before you go. And I refuse to love what my brother did to define my feelings for you. <sighs> I never thought in a thousand years I would have met someone as amazing as you. I mean, a few things I've never felt. <laughs> yeah. Beside, you know, the sexy stuff, which was like, honestly, 35% of the game, which is... I'm still reading it, too. This playthrough was fantastic. I... This was an... I still say this is my favorite visual novel ever. Hero. Big fat jerk, you broke your promise. <laughs> I told you I wanted to see you before you left! Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, I guess this will just have to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you have any idea what you have done to me? What you have done to me? I'm mean, speaking with my father, like actually talking to him. The first time I can remember, I don't have this. Had this anger thing going on inside of me. The world's best therapist. Yeah, baby! And that's still only a small fraction of what you mean to me. Yeah, yeah I haven't been. I haven't been said you rock in a long time. You brought me up. I'm home and showed me the sun. The talking, the jogging, the sports. <laughs> but. You're an incredible. Rock me to the core. How are you even possible, Renegade? Checking your side. Love and affection, hero. Yes! Yes, he. You're leaving without saying a proper goodbye? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna level with you. Your eyes lit up every time I saw you. That's cool. I adore you for it. You made me feel pretty attractive. You made me feel attractive. You made me feel important and worthwhile and good. Plus, you're a hell of a lover. Jesus, Lou, let me tell you those things. Oh. Great, you're beautiful, you're strong, and swift and brave. And you helped me feel that way about myself. Plus, you saved my life a couple times over, so that's cool. I hope we can stay in touch. We'll stay in touch. I wish we could say goodbye properly. But if you're ever out this way again, look me up. Hey! Hey! She's... Cassie doing the right thing after all these years! Big, lovable idiot. Ciao! Well, ciao. I found my phone. So I can say goodbye too. Thanks for all the tuna. And for petting me. And for all the stuff it's a... Uh, uh, it's a butt plug, but okay. 
can't believe I said that out loud, but... I hope we can see each other again someday. Maybe I'll help you become a kitty. That's all. Kitty love. Bye. You. The end of all things. I suspect that one of us, however, shall have to pay the bill. So why don't you come to my office and you'll sell this. But I warn you, Thelim Thelima has always been near to my heart. Now hurry, there's still so much pain I can cause you. I know who you're destined are. I look forward to seeing you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go after him. We drive to the land landmark parking lot, nearly hydroplaning on the painted concrete, and screech into a pot, a spot of a reckless angle. There are no other cars in the lot. All the buildings appear to be closed down still due to the storm. You jump out of your car. Though the storm has passed from the coast, you nonetheless hear a distant roll of thunder further inland. As so to say, the danger is not completely over. Yeah. You run up to the glass doors, pull on the handle. It's locked. Just then, you hear a voice coming over the speak over speaker system above you. You immediately see a security camera appearing. It's Dorian's voice. You are here. Good. We have things to settle. I'll let you in in just a moment. Dorian, don't do this. Just calm down and turn yourself in. I think we both know where this is going. We two racing towards destiny. I know why you're here. I know who sent you. But I need to make absolutely sure before we continue to the last stage of the game. So enter. You have some choices to make. A door buzzer blares, and you pull on the handle of the doors. It opens. You race inside, and the door slams behind you. You make your way through the lobby. There's a massive reception area, and signs leading to hundreds of offices. Dorian's voice comes over to the security comm again. Take the executive elevator at the end of the foyer. Top floor, it's unlocked. No unauthorized ent entry. You step inside and there's only one button for the for floor selection. <laughs> A deep anxiety begins to creep into your throat. You briefly consider contacting the police just in case things go sideways. Just as you check your phone, however, you can see that your cell service is blocked entirely. There really is no turning back now. Not really, because I have Sonic with me. Ain't that right, buddy? The elevator dings, and when the door opens, you immediately hear a voice call in desperation. Who's there? Is someone there? Please help! Please? My boyfriend has gone crazy! Please, he's going to hurt us! You step out of the elevator into another reception area. There's a large desk block blocking entry to what looks like doors to an executive office beyond. Laying on the floor are, are two women tied together. Oh, it's Alice. Alice and Bella, what are you doing? And what happened? Please, please help us. <coughs> Tied us up, he's going to hurt us. Hey, babe. Fancy running into you here. Now it's not the time for that. Stay calm. I'll deal with Thorian. Quickly, call the police before he comes back. 
Hey, Bella, is it? Just stay calm. We're in good hands. Descend the security calm cracks and Dorian's voice. Dorian's. Doria. <laughs> Dorian's voice comes back. And so, Rival, you have arrived and seen my work. I hope it goes without saying that your actions here will have consequences. But just how major will those consequences be? If indeed you are sent by destiny, then you should have nothing to worry about. Because if these two die, your quest will not be over, will it? Oh, boy. No! No, please! Neither of these are the ones you were charged with protecting, are they? Or maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about. Maybe you're not my rival. Maybe you're nobody at all. But I want to be sure. So, this is simple. Take the gun on the counter. Shoot one of the girls. Then I'll let you into my office for a chat. Any attempt to do otherwise, and I'll make a quick phone call to one of my men. And L will die. Along with several other people I believe are important to you. The bartender at the arcade, that cute barista girl, the baker. I'll pile bodies on the altar of your failure, and that will be that. Choose wisely. You have 60 seconds. And not hurting anyone, Dorian. Not even you. 55 seconds. I suggest you don't delay. You've come a long way. It's a long road back here. <laughs> Dorian, we've both been manipulated. I know you want revenge. Take me if you want. But leave these two out of it! Very well. We are, after all. Both of us pawns in all this. Leave the gun and come in. Let's settle this like civilized people. I know who is uncivilized. The world becomes dark and slow and sinister. Taking the shape of books and papers, sure and helter, helter skelter, a disc lamp light, lights the room like a persevere beacon into the underworld. But what is perhaps the most unsettling is the bit what of his cha chamber. This throne of a diseased mind is this is the desk and chair of a cruel drug kingpin, the couch of a murderer. It's so normal and mundane it cracks you with a lot of with a with a hot impatient anger. You turn and be and behold your host at last. Dorian raises his gun for you to see He gestures toward his in Infuriatingly dull couch. Have a seat. Let's discuss things. So, as you've likely figured out by now, you and I have some mutual acquaintances. Indeed. Two women, light and shadow. Is this ringing a bell? Sure. And I suppose, like me, they didn't give you the full story. A few years ago, I had a dream. Two goddesses appeared to me. It was so vivid I could smell them. I could practically taste them. One of the goddesses told me that I was a flawed hero. They said I leaned into shadow. They said I could prove myself. The others said I was perfect. That I could do heroic deeds, even from the shadows. They bid me to find five girls and protect them from harm. What followed was the worst weeks of my life. Manipulating women into loving me. Having sex with them so they would tell me their secrets. I was being used as a divine vibrator. Made to run errands and seduce others for the pleasure of two unseen taskmasters. Finally, when I knew for certain my destined were all safe, beyond harm, I had another dream. Only the Shadow Goddess returned. She praised me, 
and made love to me, and brought me great pleasures. But afterward, I took all of the gifts they had given me, and dug deeper into the circumstances that originally put the women into danger. And do you know what I discovered? Well, I gotta do it based on this guy, but I want to say this. The one who was endangering them was destined like you. Yes. This is what I learned. I was not the only piece on the board. I found out that the one I faced, too, was chosen for the task to protect women. They had seduced and bedded for the goddess's amusement. And she, too, had learned about the cycle and tried to disrupt it by killing the destined before her. It came down to she and I. She drew a gun, but I killed her first. And since then, I have been doing what my predecessor would not. I have been hunting down any other destined, any other pawns that creep their way into my town. I have killed nine other chosen, nine other rivals, to keep my power secure. Killed them with this gun, in fact. So, tell me, did the goddesses warn you about me? Did they charge you with the task to find and kill me? This could have been a lot more fun. No. More fun? Yes, I think I see what you mean. What, I wonder, would become of us joining together? What if we stopped playing their game and made our own? What would they say if we worked together? Would they find similar voyeuristic delight if you and I were to make love? To flout their perversion in their own faces? It is too bad. A shame, really. Maybe we could have formed our own little divine duo. Alas, we can't know. The fact of the matter is, I have killed many rivals. I shot the last one through the head but a few weeks ago. I've been looking for his silly cat girlfriend, in case she was one of his destined, or one for the next. And now, here you are, a new rival, arriving much faster than the ones before. The goddesses must be growing desperate. Well, the game is back in their court. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for letting me tell you all this. It is a desperate, morbid loneliness when the entire world looks like an empty vessel of meaningless choices. With no one to speak to, no one to confess to. For that, you'll always have my undying gratitude. But after everything you did, the way you've corrupted El, well, the game became personal. Really, that's all that needs to be said. Do it! Dorian's desk is a monster piece of furniture. So by flipping it, you definitely surprise Dorian. Screams of surprise, anger, suddenly denies his kill as the top of the desk strikes him in his chest. Ah! The gun Dorian is holding goes, goes flying. You try to pounce him, but he scrambles to push a button on, on the overturned desk. You see a panic room door open behind him. He rushes to it, and you miss him by inches as he runs to closes as he runs to it closes behind him. A layer bullet nearly misses you. Shot from behind the door, he must have had another gun. You wait for him to stop before you inspect the door. You quickly inspect the door, pressing on it, before finding a hidden panel with a code override. The hardware looks black market, like it's great to blow if anyone tries to force it open. That's when you realize it may... That's when you realize you may have already triggered it. You can figure this one out. Despite having never seen equipment like this before, you manage to disconnect the ordinates and open the hatch. You rush into the panic door as quickly as you can. You catch up with Dorian as he's staying outside of a secret service elevator. Raises... 
<laughs> no! Eh, <laughs> I live, bitch. I win! I'm not letting anyone take this from me! I'm not letting anyone control me! I'm not giving in! But you don't see any elevator with him, the shaft is empty. Stay quiet and watch him die. Don't you dare follow me! You walk back to Dorian's office and look at his desk phone. You phone the police and let them know Dorian Reed is DEAD! Within a short while, police are swarming the building. They bring you downtown for questioning. All right, well, after being grilled by two uninformed officers for a short time, they receive a message to leave. If only it comes in right after. Quite the mess you made, huh? That's why I'm a good partner. I would have preferred if our prime suspect hadn't wound up falling down an elevator shaft, but I'll take what I can get. But I can clean up things from here, and I'll make sure none of it falls on you or your friend Cassie. Just do me a favor. Get your cute butt out of town before you cause any more mess. The answer will be yes. Thanks for your help, Fumi. No. Thank you. And leaves. Cop shows you out. By the time you're back on the street, it's hours later. If you hurry, you can still make make your flight. The only thing left to do is go home. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen. This is it. We have made it. Oh my god, I hope I'm still recording. It's been an hour since I recorded this. Oh my god. It has finally worked! Uh. You drive a rental car back to the dealership. After all of your adventures, it feels like... It feels a bit like saying goodbye to a friend. On the road to the airport, there are tons of construction crews clearing away debris from the store. You almost expect the airport to be in shambles when you get there, but it looks pristine as though waiting for you. You make the trip through security, find an empty seat in the waiting area, and sit down. You feel as though you have you've woken from a dream. Everything seems fuzzy and indistinct. Yeah, I'm thirsty. <laughs> you grab a drink and wait for your departure time. You close your eyes for a short while, replaying the events of the last month, reliving the fun and anguish you had to go through. Someone clears your throat. Excuse me, is this seat taken? You open your eyes and see someone you don't recognize, a handsome man wearing wizard robes? May I? Sure. The name's Will. Or Mystic. Whichever you prefer. Uh, sure. You can sit. Thanks. This is my favorite spot to people watch. <laughs> this town gets a lot of people coming through. A surprising amount. I'm sure. Almost like something's leading them here. Since it's been a long road getting here, I'll try not to use up too much of your time. See... I've been keeping track of you. Not in the creepy, I watch you sleep kind of way. More just seeing the ripples you were causing. To be more clear, you were sent here as part of a game. A game whose players are not very respectful of the pieces. But I think...
think you beat the game. <laughs> so to reward you and your momentous achievement, I've decided to use what little power I've got to bend fate and hopefully give you a small parting gift. It's not a sweater that says I love Sobrosa, just in case you were worried. What's the reward? Well, it's nothing you haven't earned. It's important to know that. Because I'm not so much making something happen as I am preventing something from happening. And it's mostly up to you. A lot of people who come through this town find it easy to fall in love here. It helps that lots of beautiful, wonderful, and genuinely sexy people are locals. Mm. Eh. Present company included, of course. But after they leave, they often find it equally easy to forget. Hmm. Forget about the connections they made, forget about the love they found. If you'd like, I can make sure someone doesn't forget. If you feel like there's someone here who, above all else, you just can't say goodbye to, I can help you take their piece off the board. They won't forget, and neither will you. You mean I can choose someone to stay with me? Well, they gotta choose you too. <laughs> but yeah, that's the deal. So, if you had to choose, who would it be? My guess? Probably the gamer girl. Or the sleepy girl. Those are great choices, bud. choose someone else. No, oh, I never was very good at guessing. So is it the mean girl or the girl with the sports bike? <sighs> I choose Iro Kawase! So be it. Thanks for chatting with me. I'll let you get back to it. Take care, stranger. Mr. gets up, moments later, he hears someone call out. Hey, what up? No fair, you got a head start. You turn to see Hero jogging toward you with her usual ex exquisite posture and running form. Hey, hot stuff. Bet you thought you could get away from me, but I haven't even broken a sweat yet. When she gets close, she stops and stalls for a moment to awkwardly scratch the back of her head, then she... Woohoo! Holy crap! I really did almost lose you, eh? Thank goodness you're slower than I am. Um, hey. I only pretend to be slow to make you feel better. Yeah. Even after everything, you're a smart ass. That's good. I'm glad you're consistent. So hey, listen. I've got some stuff I need to unpack here. And I'm not sure I've got everything figured out. All the stuff that's happened and all the things you've done for me. But I really want to know if, you know, if you and I... Gah! Why can't I just say it? Look. I think you're awesome, and I want to jump your bones and do dating stuff and kiss your dumb face. I've got a ticket in my hand. I'm packed, and I'm ready to go. So do us both a favor and say yes or no really fast so I can just tear this band-aid off and get on with my life. I think this will answer the question. You take Arrow into your arms, and she gasps softly in surprise. You kiss her and she practically melts. 
She slides her hands onto your shoulders. Her lips part softly and her tongue invites a... Ooh, in the airport now. <laughs> Calm down there. After a long moment, she leans back. Wow. Cool. <laughs> the two of you stand there holding each other for a moment of pure perfection. <laughs> she insists you take the window seat and steals your complimentary peanuts, saying she needs a she needs a protein. Okay. An hour after takeoff, she falls asleep, curled up against her shoulder. It's not long after that you do as well. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of Elliot's and Sonic's Hush Hush Adventures. And before I go, before I say the last thing, before I fully end this playthrough, thank you everyone for the two years I spent doing this playthrough, from being really excited for this and actually doing videos on this throughout the later part of 2022, and then throughout 2023, I was, up until the last part of it, I didn't really make videos, and then I just kind of stopped, and then February, I uploaded, I uploaded a video, then didn't do that, and then May, I uploaded a video, and now in July, and well, not July, but I recorded episode 16 in July, then uploaded in August. Day after I uploaded <laughs> episode 16, I recorded episode 17. Days A day after uh, episode 17 got uploaded, I think a day, af day after I recorded it, I, I started doing the first session for this. It was only a half hour long. Then... Then I did spend an hour on this, and now it is finally over and done with. I can go on the rest of my life saying I completed a Hush Hush for the support, my full and loving support for Sad Panda Studios. I am, I am very, very happy to be a part of this community. It's so awesome, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for this channel. But there's something happening in America this year, so who knows? I don't know what kind of future this channel will hold because of it, so just gotta wait and see. But aside of me saying what's happening here in North America, Elliot's story has fully ended. And there will be some more expanded story explanations, mostly on my Instagram now, so go ahead and follow me over there. I would like to thank Shirogogo one last time for being part of the home stretch. I want to thank every one of you who has watched every single video of this playthrough, and I want to thank everyone for watching this video. And I want to thank everybody who watched the Honey Pop 2 playthrough I did two years ago. It was awesome. That's what started Elliot's whole story. And that's what started my whole channel. Well, actually, what started the whole thing was Honey Pop 1, but you can play it. It doesn't really matter if I explain story into that, so. But I'm very, very happy that I finished this. And it couldn't be done without you guys. So, from this Sonic Blush to me, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. And thank you for your full and loving support. And I will see you all in the next video. My final goodbye for the Hush Hush playthrough. Goodbye, everyone.
feelings deep inside come flowing from my eyes. I get to go home with you. All the lights up in the sky. All the times that I spent by your side taught me love. And taught me pain Things that I Could never have explained Now I'm not alone A family of my own I get to go home With you Feelings deep inside Come flowing from my eyes Sweet.